Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schiffedecke. And I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast for December 8th, 2024. Working Preachers uh, Narrative Lectionary Podcast 601. Okay, so we're not going to have a cake or celebration for just... 601. This is the podcast uh, for the second Sunday in Advent. And this year, uh, the, that text is from the prophet Joel. All right, so just a word about Joel. So we uh, last week, we were, in terms of the narrative timeline, we were in the... Um, the exile. Most, although the debate of the prophet Joel is, de- uh, um, the date of the prophet Joel is debated. And actually, I would even let you know, uh, Jim Nagolsky from Baylor actually doesn't think he was actually a historical prophet. That's a whole another thing. He's rather uh, an editorial layer. But for those of us that do, um, most people uh, date him to after the after the exile. And so that's why we're having it here. We know that after the exile um, from things in third uh, in the, at the end of the book of Isaiah and uh, in other parts of, you know, like from the prophet um, Haggai, there were there were problems with the harvest and, and lack of fertility of the land. And so the, the, the invasion of locusts, the prophet Joel is marked by an invasion of locusts. So we have two verses from it. Um, The first one really fits well with Advent. It's chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Even now, the Lord says, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your clothing, and return to the Lord your God. For he is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abundant and steadfast love. So you've got... You get, you get a fragment of Israel's sort of creedal statement of God, who is God. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. But you also get this call to worship, but it's particular, uh, a repenting worship, a uh, uh, one, one in which we fast. So um, it is, when you compare, like, Amos, the prophet Amos, he doesn't, uh, he has no, uh, nothing positive to say about worship. And so maybe the worship teacher uh, in the seminary curriculum likes the book of Joel more than the book of Amos, uh, because it, Joel seems to have a very positive view of worship and that it can, that our repentance and worship can in fact move God's heart if we will rend our hearts, not our clothing. So that's, uh, that's, that's notable. Um, the second thing is then, uh, we also have verses, is it 28 and 29 or 29 and 30? Yes. It's mm-hmm. 28 and 29. It's looking towards the future when I will pour out my flesh, my spirit on all flesh on sons and daughters, old men and young men, male and female slaves. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. Now, normally we associate this with Pentecost, but if you look at the start of the book of Luke, Everyone, uh, including the women there, the old women and the young women, uh, 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 they are prophesying in the Holy Spirit. So I think that's really interesting. And by the way, our, the tradition in which Catherine and I and you, Joy, are, are different cr- Christian traditions ordain women, this verse is one of the re- uh, reasons that the, the Spirit is poured out. And look, it's, it's male and female, old and young, prophesy. And so it's it's that there is strong scriptural warrant for women, and so I just wanted uh, to say that so that you guys didn't feel like you had to uh, always be the ones defending women's ordination. Thank, Thank you, you Ralph. for I, that, Ralph. Uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Hey, I want to I, I want to I want to connect this back uh, just briefly to a couple of the readings that we've had earlier in the year. Because uh, that's one of the reasons we do the narrative lectionary, right? So, so people can mm-hmm. connect the texts across uh, and see the larger narrative, and it has to do with uh, verse thirteen. So, rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. 
Uh, it's important to note, uh, Rolf, I think you referred to this as a creedal statement, and that, that does seem to be what it is, because it occurs at several places in the Old Testament. First of all, in Exodus 34, where it's God's own self-description, uh, yes. it's right after the golden calf, uh, which which mm-hmm. we had earlier in the year, that story of the golden calf. Uh, God um, speaks to Moses in chapter 34 and affirms that even despite this sin, God, uh, well, first God says, I'll send an angel. I won't go with you, but I'll send an angel. And Moses argues God into coming, uh, you know, God's self uh, with the Israelites. And then uh, uh, wants to see God and God uh, hides Moses in the cleft of the rock, uh, passes by and says this, that God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing uh, this is also what Jonah says. Remember when we uh, talked about Jonah several weeks ago? Uh, but in Jonah's mouth, this is an accusation, right? This is why I didn't go uh, to Nineveh, God, because I knew that you were God, no. gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, right? Uh, so in Jonah's mouth, it's an accusation. But here in, in Joel, uh, again, we have it as uh, not accusation, but affirmation or or, or promise, really, uh, that if you, you know, uh, that that you can uh, return to God with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, uh, because God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in chesed, in steadfast love and covenant love, and relents from punishing. So uh, this is not, you know, a vindictive God. This is not a God uh, who uh, will uh, abandon or, or ignore God's people, but, uh, but a, a God abounding in steadfast love and loving kindness and covenant love. Uh, so this is this is a promise for us and uh, appropriate again for Advent as we uh, as we you know we, we're used to thinking about Lent as a time of repentance, but Advent has some of that character as well that as we prepare for the coming of the Lord, uh, the coming of the Messiah as a babe in Bethlehem, we also, uh, are preparing in the same way for Jesus' second coming, for uh, f- when when he comes to judge the living and the dead. Uh, and so repentance is an appropriate response uh, for that for that season of preparation uh, for Christ's second coming. I appreciate that that parallel of uh, the the season of Advent, um, where uh, we'll talk about. Um, uh, John the Baptist coming before Jesus uh, to prepare the way, and um, that that preparing is our our heart's posture in expectation of the return of Christ. And um, so that this positive idea that Ralph was speaking of in terms of uh, our our worship is um, uh, is our heart relationship with God and with one another, and not just uh, our attitude of being in the rituals of worship. Um, I often compare this back to Cain, who Cain brought the offering to God, but he had a broken relationship, uh, uh, a coveting relationship against his brother Abel. And that's what God calls him on. It's not the offering that's the problem. It's the attitude that's the problem. And so here we have um, that uh, return to God with all our heart, and we're rending our hearts, not our clothing, that we're, we're not doing the acts of tearing our clothes, but that we actually are repenting in our hearts. And, and that's what I, I hear you getting at, Catherine, uh, that God is concerned not merely with the ritual, but with the relationship. And to, to, um, to piggyback uh, what I really appreciate you, you saying, uh, 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 Ralph, about this, uh, the verses 28 and 29, is the reminder that when God's Spirit is poured out upon all the earth— that all of the divisions and caste and class that society assigns are erased so that what becomes noticeable is the presence of God, the promise of God, the peace of God. And that's what we prophesy about. That's what we bear witness to. And so this is the season where we point to, 
to God's peace, the glimpses of God's peace, the fulfillment of God's promise, God incarnate on earth. As we prepare for that, we bear witness to the faithfulness of God. Thanks. That's a great ending. I'm going to add one more thing just about it, that as Catherine has already pointed out, you know, we, this, uh, we point backwards to both that Jonah quotes this creed-like fragment, uh, and it comes from Exodus 34. Um, but also when the prophet says, rend your heart, not your clothing, that sounds very similar to something in Deuteronomy, which we don't have this year, but I think sometimes... Uh, sometimes we misportray Jews uh, as, especially when the Gospels are misread as, as um, like ritually observing, but not spiritually observing. And I think it's good to remember that the book of Deuteronomy, uh, in that light, the book of Deuteronomy says, circumcise your heart, not your, you know, just your body. And so this is very similar to that Um uh, and just with all of the sort of anti-Judaism going on right now in our culture, I think it's uh, it's good just to remind us that this is a faithful reading, that Joel's reading is faithful to the book of Deuteronomy. And if I can add, I, I definitely appreciate that, Rolf, that when we are talking about the witness to God that God's people is making, it is that sense of um, throughout the prophet's disappointment with God's people, it's its never with the practices of the ritual. It's always with how they are interacting with their neighbor. And that includes the immigrant, the alien, and the slave. And that's where Joe, that is also where Joe's interpretation is consistent with uh, um, the Mosaic Code. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The Narrative Lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.